Good morning, friends. Greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice rather than toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or the longevity products, the longevity business, if you have a success story you want to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, we want to hear from you. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us help you change your life today. I want you to change your life today. If you're sick, you're not feeling well, you got a chronic illness, progressive illness, you're on prescription drugs, I want this to be the best day of your life. I want this to be the most important day of your life. I want to change your life today. 844-236-6010. It's simple, it's easy. That's the problem. It's too simple and too easy. We don't believe it. It's so simple and so easy. That's why people resist fasting. Fasting is so simple, so easy. I get letters all the time about fasting. How do I fast? You stop eating. That's how you fast. You don't eat. And if you don't want to fast, eat less calories. It's simple. It's easy. We're not supposed to be sick. That's the whole point of this program, folks. That's why it's called the bright side. We're not supposed to be sick. We've been talking about this distinction between the cell and inflammation and microinflammation, all this stuff about distinctions. In order to be in control of our body and our health, we have to look more closely at how the disease process takes place. I've been doing this for 30 years, folks. I've been a healthcare practitioner for 30 years, working with patients, 29 years, excuse me. Actually, you know what? If you count my internship, which started in January of 1986, it's now 30 years of working with patients, making medicine in the laboratory. I had a compounding pharmacy. I made the medicine, mostly skin, but other kinds of medicine as well. I formulated. I'm a researcher. Love to research how the body works. If I, if I know one thing over 30 years of looking and working and dealing with patients and the medical, medical model in general is that sickness is not the way. It's not the way the body's supposed to be. The body's a healing and regenerating system. Humanity could not have survived the 200 to 500,000 years we've been around if we were obese and riddled with sickness and autoimmunity and diabetes and cancer when we were on the African savanna. We wouldn't be here today. We would be some other form of some other life form. We are the descendants of human beings who evolved to repair and renew and thrive under conditions of famine, under conditions of drought, under conditions of lack of all kinds without doctors without doctors, without med medicine, without the medical model. Oh, okay, now, now I'm going to hear somebody say about antibiotics. Great, I know about antibiotics. Maybe some uh, chemotherapy. Rarely does the medical model do anything. And it, uh, certainly in the realm of chronic degenerative disease, we don't need medicine. In the realm of chronic degenerative diseases, which is the vast majority of our illnesses, we don't need to be doctored. That's great news if you're on a medicine. If you're on a drug, that's the best news you've heard since you started this journey, this uh, journey of interacting with the medical model. Humans are self-repairing. We're self-repairing systems from our, self, from our cells upwards. But the medical model will have us believe that we need to be on their program, whether it's drugs or surgeries or mammograms or colonoscopies. Did you read about mammograms last week too, by the way? Once again, it was shown that mammograms, 
uh, that you want to minimize your interaction with mammograms, which just makes sense. Only a doctor would think you radiate your breast and it gets better, or you radiate your breast and you're healthier for somehow. We have to ask our doctors. If you're an average person, you know, watching television for two, three, four hours at night, do you, have, do you have any idea how many times you're going to hear, ask your doctor, my doctor told me, my doctor put me on, my doctor ordered me, my doctor's very happy. You could say, you could substitute the word doctor for mommy. My mommy told me, ask your mommy. My mommy put me on. My mommy ordered me. My mommy's very happy. Do you know how many times a week, a month, a year, this hypnotic mantra is pounded into us by a medical model that could care less about us as individuals? It's the individual versus the model. It's the individual versus the institution of medicine. As always, individuals are pitted against institutions. And I'm not talking about individual doctors, by the way, here. This is the point. It's the institution of medicine. I, I, I've got lots of friends who are doctors and naturopaths. It's great. Uh, they're, they're all, not all, but the vast majority are decent people who want to help us. The model's corrupt. Are you surprised? Look at all the models that we live with. Look at our political model. Look at our legal model. Look at the IRS. Are we surprised that the medical model would be corrupt? Are we surprised that institutions would be corrupt? Why do we let them do this to us? You know, if I didn't see this with my own eyes, I wouldn't even believe it. I've seen the wounded and the maimed and the killed by drugs and the, and, and the organs removed. I, the, the most tragic thing of all is when you see a thyroid removed. Oh, my God, it, it's the most heartbreaking thing. How in God's green earth could anybody who's a lover of humanity and the human body and individuals take somebody's thyroid out? Oh, if there's cancer, it's riddled with cancer, that's one thing. But if it's hyperactive, Graves' disease is the main reason why people will radiate or remove, or doctors will radiate or remove the, the thyroid. So what is it that counts for this pure evil of the medical model? It's not the CEOs and the drug company researchers and the doctors. They're not evil. It's this focus on symptomology. It's this focus on numbers. It's this focus on tests. This is a, a distinction. You know, we've been talking distinctions here now for a while. Inflammation, anti-inflammation, uh, micro-inflammation. That's a major distinction. We'll talk about that here in a minute or, or maybe later tomorrow. The distinction between cells and organs by focusing on organs. We miss the source of the disease state, which is the cell. Another distinction, the distinction called clinical chemistry versus biochemistry. I, I guarantee you, very few have ever heard this distinction. Nobody makes it. Clinical, chem, clinical chemistry is the chemistry of tests, the chemistry of numbers, the chemistry of test scores. Even alternative practitioners, naturopaths, people I respect, are bamboozled by testing and scores and diagnostics. Risk management, it's called. That's what are really our medical models about risk management. We don't know if statin drugs really work, but we know you'll lower your risk of a heart attack by 3.8%. Oh, this beta blocker. Oh my God, beta blockers. If you hear the word blocker, inhibitor, anti in your medicine, you know you don't, it's not a good thing. But beta blockers, they're among the most, arguably the most toxic class of drugs. Maybe chemotherapy is worse but certainly in the argument for most poison, mo most toxic poison pharmaceutical, class of pharmaceuticals are the beta blockers. They poison your heart, but it'll lower your blood pressure. And doctors love beta blockers. You know, there's like uh, over 100 million prescriptions. I think it's like 130 million prescriptions. Somebody's, some, 130 million times somebody gets a beta blocker every year. This is a quote from uh, Dr. Anthony Komarov of the Harvard Medical School, quote, beta blockers are one of the most important classes of drugs invented in the past half century. They're so important that their inventor was honored with the Nobel Prize, Sir James Black, that's his name, was honored with the Nobel Prize. They have saved many lives, but that doesn't mean they're for everyone or without possible side effects. No kidding. Beta blockers, this is the best part. Beta blockers are used primarily to control high blood pressure and abnormal heart rhythms. Oh, yeah? How do they control blood pressure? They poison it. They poison the vasculature. They poison the heart. That's how they work. Who thinks that's a good idea? All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. 
Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that we talk about or advertise on the program, recommend on the program, call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or check out my blog, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. You can also go to brightsideben.com and you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website or by calling the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you want to start a business helping people, making a difference, wouldn't you agree that's the best way to make money? is to help people to make a difference in their lives, a positive difference in their lives? What if doctors only got paid if somebody got better? Not their symptoms, not, I'm sorry, not their test scores, but really got better. Not just their numbers, but they felt better. They had more energy. They thought more clearly. They could go exercise. They slept less. There wouldn't be a lot of doctors, probably. Anyway, 844-236-6010 is our number today. If you have questions about health, nutrition, or prescription drugs, we're talking about this major distinction between clinical chemistry and biochemistry. Clinical chemistry is, a, is the chemistry of the clinic. It's the doctor chemistry. It's, a, it's test score chemistry. It's diagnostic chemistry. Biochemistry is the chemistry of real life. It's how you feel. If you want to be healthy, go to a biochemist, not a doctor. If you want your numbers to be healthy, then you go to a doctor. If you want your bio to be healthy, your biology to be healthy, your body to be healthy, go to a biochemist. Or better, just listen to this program or study some biochemistry. It's not even that hard. It's not that hard. And it's super cool. When I first discovered biochemistry in pharmacy school, oh my God, I, it was a spiritual experience, I have to say. I mean, organic chemistry, that's, that's one thing. And that's pretty cool, if you're a chemist anyway. But when you see what goes on in the body, the chemistry of a cell, the zillions with a Z. I don't even know if the number's high enough of chemical reactions that happen in a second in the body. There's no number really. It's probably like more, there's more chemistry going on in your body in terms of reactions every second than there are stars in the universe. It's just immense. And, it's, and all that it really is, by the way, is shape shifting. Things changing shape. That's all chemistry is, shape shifting. Just think Tinker Toys and Tinker Toys changing shape. I mean, if you could deal, if you could play with Tinker Toys, you can understand biochemistry. I'm not kidding. Tinker Toys equal biochemistry, but we're bamboozled. We're hoodwinked into thinking this is all complex and complicated, and we have to go to an authority. We have to go outside of our bodies, outside of our cells, outside of our symptoms, outside of what we see in our bodies. So what does this account for this? What accounts for this entrancement that allows a guy like Dr. Anthony Komaroff of the Harvard Medical School, probably a smart man, certainly he's no dummy, what uh, allows for this kind of hypnosis that allows him to say, beta blockers lower blood pressure primarily, this is a quote, quote, beta blockers lower blood pressure primarily by slowing the rate and force with which the heart pumps. Slowing the rate and the force. What does that mean, slowing? How does it slow it? Does it ask it nicely? No, it poisons it. It shuts it down. That's how it does it. But Dr. Komarov, a smart man, he thinks that's a good thing. And so there's this hypnosis that's going on from the doctor level down to us. It allows us to take our organs out. It allows us to focus on numbers and statistics and diagnostics and measurements rather than the person, the patient, us. It's not making a distinction between clinical chemistry, the chemistry of test scores, and biochemistry, the chemistry of real life humanity, of us as individuals. Test scores are a representation of what's happening in the body. Side effects are what is real life. It's what, ha what these things are doing. Oh, you're going to lower your test score, but you're going to have a side effect. Well, the test score is the clinical chemistry, the side effect is you, it's us, it's me, it's the biochemistry. It's the biochemistry yelling at the clinical chemistry. What did you do to me? <laughs> that's, that's essentially what's happening when we have a side effect. It's our biochemical nature screaming at clinical chemistry. What are you doing? I can't get out of bed. I got a cold sore. I can't have sex. I can't think. I can't go to the gym. My muscles hurt. That's the biochemistry yelling at the clinical chemistry. And we think that our biochemistry is somehow better because our test scores are improved. And then we're shocked we have a, when we take our beta blockers and we got no energy. We can't get out of bed. We can't exercise. We're constipated. Oh, but our test scores are good. 
Oh, your muscles may ache or become forgetful, but your HDL just went up two points. Yes, sir. Yippee.